The Dream Hunts crew met my dad on a hunt with um, Lexi Bingham a little while ago, and um, my dad kind of told them my story, and they were gracious enough to want to give me a hunt, one so I could do it while I was home on my Christmas break, so we could do this hunt before I aged out of the program. I have muscular dystrophy. Um, I'm in the type they call it limb girdle. Um, but I don't really fit exactly into that category either. So I'm kind of just kind of floating around in my own little bubble um, within muscular dystrophy. Um, I mean, I was told, or well, my parents were told that I would be permanently in a wheelchair by the age of 10. I would need a heart transplant by the age of like 15 and I probably wouldn't live into my 20s. Uh, this is Mr. T. <laughs> Let me get his altar on. My best friend bought him and first trained him as a barrel horse, but um, he doesn't really like to run. He's kind of lazy, so <laughs> he didn't work out as a barrel horse either. And so me and him kind of clicked and then my best friend left him here and I started riding him and we do really good together. <laughs> I go to Colorado State University in Fort Collins. Um, I'm a double major with equine science and agriculture education on the teacher development tract, and I also have a minor in ag business. Um, the brown one is blue. He's my gelding. He's a trained therapy horse. And then the black one is Dooley, and he's my four-year-old stud who will hopefully be getting me some babies in a couple years. <laughs> So I learned to shoot um, from my dad. We grew up around guns and out here where we had the opportunity to shoot a lot. See that rock that's kind of, it's white, but it's funny shaped. Yeah, it's like white on the top. Yep, we got snow on it. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. I've been shooting for as long as I can remember and, you know, starting out with 22s and kind of just working your way up. And so did a lot with my dad and my grandpa. It's nice to be loud. I can't do it with a bill on the top of my head. Now I look like a dork. You adjust yourself where you need to be. Is right where your original one was, Tony. Just about that far away from each other. I think that'll work. <laughs> Four? 396, yep. Four hundo. That'll work. <laughs> Probably good. We can get closer than that, too. All right. I think we're good. Well, Caleb um, got to come on the hunt with us. He is my brother in law, so my sister's husband. Um, it was kind of important to me to have him come along too. He guides a lot and he knows a lot about hunting. Who's the better shot at you two? I think they're um, pretty evenly matched for the most part. Yeah, I think so. I mean, we've been shooting for the same amount of time, pretty much. Yeah. So we like to have fun little competitions whenever we go out back, but yeah. Look at them broadside, Tony. Mm -hmm. yeah. How far, Tony? That is, I'm gonna get my mittens to work. More than 1,200. <laughs> we went to Hawkshurst Ranch for day one. Uh, we met up with Jake Click and Brandon Bruton. Will those rails come off the side rail? I think, yeah. Will they? Sure, yep. Okay. Because what I've been doing with the Dodge is she's been shooting off the side of the Dodge. Okay. And I would have brought it, but it doesn't have doors when it's really hard to get in and out of. Gotcha. It's, no? it's a 97, so it doesn't have the Do -do doors. Gotcha. And so, um, nope. but she's good. I mean, last night she she shot, we shot 400 and 
660. So. We jumped into Jake's truck. He had a flatbed pickup, um, which is easier for me to shoot off of. Started driving around where he knew some elk have been. We didn't see any bulls. We just saw a couple cows. It's two bedded and one stand underneath it. And we just drove around for a little while. We almost got the truck stuck. Um, so we went back and got a side by side and then took that the rest of the way, but still no luck on um, any bulls that day. Yeah, it was just a lot of just cows. There were some back up in the mountains where we took the side by side. And then whenever we came back, there were some out in the hay field right by the house. Just a good group of them. There's probably seven or eight of them. <laughs> She's like a dog. You go walking and she'll follow you just like a dog. Yeah. <laughs> just kind of cruising around. We also went up uh, the other side of Hawkshurst to see if there were any up there and um, no luck there either. So just a bunch of cows. We're just out yeah. looking for and I've gone 421. Got quite a few people out here helping me look for something, but good times. Mm -hmm. Well, there's our first bull, man's right there. No, we've seen other bulls. <laughs> Not this close. I bet those other ones they seen come up that are up farther on the hill come down into here. The third day we were gonna go hunting, I um, was just getting out of bed and my dad um, called me at probably seven in the morning and he was, he called me and I'm like, hey, and he's like, I have a bull, get your stuff together. I'm gonna come get you and we're gonna go get this bull. Well, I got the call from Kenzie this morning, actually, and uh, her dad, Tony, called her, and so she called me because I was out looking at another spot for bulls, and she sounded a little tired, so I knew I had a little bit of time to get back to the house. <laughs> she got woke up. Uh, we're just following these guys. They're in the dog with the flatbed, and um, we're about five minutes away now, so gonna be goat time here shortly. I wasn't in my government truck. I would have just stayed and had you guys meet me. Well, that's what we were thinking, but... It was probably like 30 minutes by the time we all got up there, and so um, there were two bulls on the hillside, and they had both moved around a little bit, and we couldn't find him. And so we took a good 15 minutes driving around the hill where there was a road, and couldn't see him, couldn't see him. Just getting the spotter out so we can... I think that bull laid down, so get better eyes on him. Hello? Tony? Yep. Hey, I got that bull spotted. Oh, right on. We'll be right there, buddy. up and waited for him to stand up and he walked a little bit and at first I lost him in my scope so I had to readjust. Two pretty good bulls up there and one's bedded and one's milling around just above him up there. We're just There's one of these that's wounded and that's kind of the one we'd like to take to, just so he doesn't suffer the rest of the winter. And uh, We're pretty sure he's the one that's bedded so we're gonna we're just, we're just waiting for him to stand up. Yep, here he goes. He's getting up. He's getting up. You got him, Jake? You got him? He's up there. Where is he? He's up to the left. Up there. Up into the left. Up to the left, about 20 yards. Stop him in the open for you guys. Let me get your level to learn. Okay. All right, your level right there. Your level. Are you going to shoot? Oh. 
You can see the steam or my spots go. I don't know if he's breathing, but you can see it on the steam. I, I think that means she, she got long. It looked high to me with the way it looked on the hides, but with the way he's acting, I think it hit good. Or yeah, if you right, so there's another bull right above him. That's not him. No, nope, that's not him. That's not him. The one that's walking left. Yeah, that, that bull's that bull's direction below him. I missed my first shot, and then he walked another 10 or 15 steps up and then stopped broadside in a clear little spot in the brush so I could see him perfectly clear and that. And then I took the shot at 560 yards, and it only took the one shot to take him down. He went right in that opening. It was perfect. perfect. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. I know he took a step right as he shot. Though. He stops right there, it was perfect. It looked high because I saw his skin. Oh, oh punch money. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right the oh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. Awesome, awesome. The second one, I had impact and I watched his shoulder flinch up and his hide move. And then he turned around and then he walked a little bit more and then went down. And we're watching his breath, so we think he's down. Oh, well, that's pretty cool. That's 560 yards. That's that's a pretty good poke. That's awesome. So we're just we'll probably give him give him another 15 minutes or so, and then we'll we'll start hiking up. We we may have to Jake and Caleb may have to uh, switch off packing Mackenzie up there, but we'll uh, we'll see we'll see what happens. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why'd you have to shoot him up there? <laughs> <laughs> following guide's orders. Yeah, following the guide's orders, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> you good for another yeah, go? You want me? Well, we'll go. Go. Yeah. Ready? Yep, whenever. Cool. Every time I shift my weight, I just see. Oh, get one. You good? Yep. So we're, we're about halfway up there, and Jess is breaking trail for us. Oh, so it's Jess Young Outfitters. They've been a ranching family here in the valley for lots and lots of years. And uh, yeah, the, they've outfitted for a long time as well. So Jess was gracious enough to let Mackenzie shoot this bull. So can't thank him enough. Just like a sheep, Bill. And back to the bull would get on the hill like this, and that's what they do. Yeah. Look at that. Uh -huh. Oh my goodness. Wow. Woo! 
Yeah, buddy. Will that do? That'll do. Fantastic. Look at his mask. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Freaking dagger point. Thank you, buddy. I know he was decent. Woo! Beautiful bull, man. Smoker bull. That's what got me. I knew he was big, but he was yeah. yeah, I can't get my fingers around that. So what we're going to do is ride the struggle bus for <laughs> freaking 30 <laughs> yards. And then we kind of got a trail broke down below here. There's one bad section. And then we'll kind of flatten out the bottom. And the girls are down, down below us. But we got to get through this stuff first. So but we'll make it. We'll make it work. We got to get that bull to McKenzie. Yep. One way or another, we'll make that. it happen. Yeah. <laughs> we only do this for people huh? we really like. <laughs> Hold on, let me get his leg on. We're good. Go. So my dad texted me a picture whenever they went up and found him. And so that was the first thing that I saw of him. And I was just like, he is huge. Like, I knew I was going to get a cool bull, but I didn't know it was going to be a bull like that. And so that picture was pretty cool. <laughs> That's sweet. He's thick. I just didn't know if there was a little. Like, you guys stopped him. Yeah, right. Oh, well, I can't get the front. Something you're around there, Let me get on. I think that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty, pretty. That's beautiful. This has been uh, just amazing. The, uh, we live uh, live in a pretty special valley. I want to say a little prayer if I can. Lord. Uh, we live in this pretty special place and I want to thank you for, uh, for this ground, for these animals, and for uh, good people. This had never happened without the people in this valley. There were so many people that stepped up. I want to thank you for them and I want to thank you for, your, for giving us a pathway to heaven through Jesus Christ and making it easy for those who seek it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I don't know, this is pretty cool. <laughs> <sighs> this will thank everybody that hikes me up the mountain <laughs> and helped me get it. Don't you guys come in here? We just all want to thank Colorado Dream Hunts and everybody that donates to them. You can see this is what happens. Yeah, I want to thank everybody that was involved. It was fantastic. This was once in a lifetime for her. Thank God for killed and Hi, babe. Hi. Hey, you did it? I did it. Yeah. And Let's we're... remind everybody. We got about a hundred yards under it, and Kenzie and I stopped and they drove it to us. You drag it the way they down. Just... And you got your pictures. And I got the pictures. <laughs> just right here somewhere, just scribble. I'm so excited. You guys are awesome. Thank you.
the hunt was freaking cool, man. Just going from ranch to ranch and uh, calling landowners and everyone here in the valley kind of knows what's going on and everyone being super willing to help Kinsey out has just been a really, really, really cool deal. Yeah, this was, it was a pretty, pretty special deal. Um, like she said, we don't, we don't see them that big around here that often. And um, the fact that you could just kind of tell that he was an older, mature bull. It's always cool whenever you're not forced to take the young ones, you can kind of take an older one that's been able to live a really good life. I want to thank um, the landowners up here, so Jess Young, uh, and also the CPW and um, Colorado Dream Hunts for giving me this opportunity.